<laughs> yeah, so City Museum's cool. Um, when we went there, there uh, there's a show, I think it's called Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And the last time we went there on vacation, we uh, we tried to eat at all the places. Oh, that they had on the show? Yeah, and the two places I remember <laughs> is they have a place, uh, it's called Something Something Candy Kitchen, and they have a one pound BLT burger. So they put like a pound of bacon on this BLT. It's ridiculous, it's not good. Dude. It, because it's, you know, the, the BLT has a balance to it, a sweetness yeah. and a saltiness. That doesn't have a balance. Yeah, it, has, it doesn't have a balance. And then we, uh, and we also got the biggest delivery uh, pizza in the United States of America. <laughs> and we used to have a Dodge Caravan, and the only way we could get into the car is to open the back. <laughs> it wouldn't even go through the sliding doors on the side. Are you for like, real? You, like, what it, is it, this place? It's, it's in St. Louis. It's in St. Louis. So we, we had those, those two places and a barbecue place. But barbecue place is kind of like, I've had good barbecue. And it was good barbecue, but. Yeah, I'm just, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to try it. We're yeah. going to see. I don't know. What, St. Louis ribs are supposed to be the good yeah. ribs? But the great thing okay. about, like, the pizza thing is, like, you know, it's more about the experience than the actual pizza. Because, like, my kids, my kids were like, this is, we ate, as a family of four, we ate that pizza for two and a half meals and threw, threw some away. <laughs> Dude. And that's four people. That's six people. Yeah. So, anyway, it was, but, yeah, you but know, your kids, but, were, but, how, were they, were they big? They were were they little? No, yeah. They there you go. They I don't bad. know. I'm not an and so my kids would probably eat all of it. No, they Because they eat, well, I don't know. Let's explode it. Yeah, they would have. Hey, welcome to the, uh, can we say spring break edition? Spring break edition. The spring break edition of Grace Unfiltered. Um, you're, you're not, you're, you're chilling this week. You're not, you're not. I'm doing home projects. You're doing home yeah. projects, gotcha. Yeah. I'm doing family projects. You are? And be, yeah, I am. I'm just, I'm sewing into the family. Yeah, look at that. That's, yeah, you look know, that. that's, and I enjoy that. And then Bishop is sewing into the family as well. He is. He's, yeah, so it's, it's good. So here's a tip, always sew into the family. Yeah. There you go. I learned that a long time ago. Wait, and I, I this is not a, this is not a uh, shameless plug, but it's a shameless plug. It's a shameless plug. <laughs> there is a conference that uh, your father and brother-in-law and brother-in-law are going to be. I cannot remember. I was and trying Dr. To, Watson, <clears throat> yeah, and Marius, Dr. Marius Watson and uh, Leroy Armstrong. So you thought I was playing? Yeah. I know Leroy Armstrong yeah, sure. from from. Well, he's not from Dallas, but he pastored in Dallas for a while. What was the name of the conference? I cannot think of the name of it. It's a it's a Brown Baptist or something like that. That's right. Also, Ernest Thomas and yeah. his wife, yeah. they've been going to Brown Baptist Conference for 12 years, maybe? 11 years. Right. Yeah, so I know everybody there. Yeah. I should be, if it costs, I should be able to get in free. I know, we should, <clears throat> we should, we should probably let's go. Just, let's, no, for real, let's go. Just in the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do we have to dress up? I hope not. I hope I'm, not, because I ain't, yeah, dude. So to the lady that told me that she would buy me a suit, thank you. I, I'm, I'll try it on. I'm, there's no guarantee I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> we only have a few questions this morning, and uh, I have a question at the very end if you don't get to it. Okay. Question number one, who are you guys rooting for to win the NCAA tournament? I already know Josh's answer. Yeah, and yeah. I probably already know your answer. Do you? No, no, I don't know. I don't have anybody this year. So, your answer is Tennessee, right. of course. Your answer probably by default is Arkansas. Yeah, well, no, I mean, uh, I am not speaking negatively toward them. Sure. Uh, but if they get past, um, so they'll play, by the time you're watching this, they'll play tomorrow. Um, who are they playing? UConn. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't have a, you know what? Here's who will probably win now that Kansas is out, Alabama. You see Nick Saban call out the Alabama coach this morning? Did he? I missed it. I'll tell you about it later. Wow. That's but it, deep. But it was a call out. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh yeah, I need to check that out. So who you guys rooting for? Tennessee. Alabama. My niece went to University of Alabama, there you go. but she lives in Miami, so don't know who she's rooting for. In the parable, Josh, don't parable. say your name, but it's, it's what you're saying. <laughs> you said the elder brother was lost, but he's at home with the father, right? 
wouldn't that make him saved? Boom. That's a heck of a question. So this man, let me let me just say this real, just like this. And I told either I told you this or Aaron told you this. Okay. That sermon Sunday, it was a gut punch. If you have not watched it, go back right now when you finish this. Go back, watch the sermon. That was good stuff, man. That was an awesome sermon. Thank you. So anyway, so how so the question is how is the elder basically how is the elder brother right. lost when he's with the father, when he's around? Right. And I think I, 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 and I and that's what I would say. So I think two things can be said here. Um, one is that he's not the whole point is that he's not at home. He's right. at work. He's a, he's in the vicinity of home, but he's he's not. So in the you know, so so what we said in the parable is that being at home with the father denotes salvation. Like it's very right. clear with the younger brother, the younger brother defines it. The younger brother goes out, he parties, and we all know that when he's out partying, he's lost. And then, and then when he comes home to the father, the father, Jesus defines it as the father. The father says, my son was dead, now he's alive, he was, he was lost, lost, and now, and now he's, he's found. found right? Yeah. Um, but this goes, so, so he's out in Vegas, but the older brother is in Vegas. at work right. in, in the field. He's right. at work in the field. So he's not home, he's at work in the field. He's close. And I think this is the confusing part because, you know, the father says, listen, listen, everything that I have is yours. Right. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to worry, you don't have to stress about this. Come home with me. He invites him home, but it says the younger, uh, the older son refused right. to go in. So here's the deal. And, I, and, and I'd like to elaborate a little bit more on this idea yeah. is, is, <clears throat> Both the younger son and the older son wanted the same thing from the father. We, we said this, but I'm, I'm going right. to deep dive you into have to it say for that a second. Um, they both wanted the father's stuff, but not the, but father. Not the father. But here's the deal: um, what they did was they went a, they went about trying to attain that in different ways. So one son did the whole Vegas thing: just give it to me, I'm out. The other one was the studious son. And he said, you know, if, if I work for him long enough and I'm, I'm the good kid, then I'll get my inheritance and I'll be rich. And, you know, he can die off and I can do my own thing. My kids, you know, all of our kids have um, different ways of coping with trying to get their way. You know, right. I, ha you know I have some very uh, studious children um, that they do the right thing. They always do the right. And then I've got some rebellious children, like in my own household. And if you have more than one kid, that's going to happen. That's going to happen. Right. Right. And so a lot of us religious people, uh, a lot of us who have uh, that either in our background or our bent, or uh, we believe that if we do good enough, yeah, if we follow the rules, then the Lord has to bless us, has to give us X, Y, and Z. Um, it's called a, 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 it's called work salvation. Yeah. You know, there you, go. you work for your salvation. There you go. And so Jesus <clears throat> is, he's simultaneously, and this is where it comes. He's simultaneously, he's, so he's teaching in front of two groups. The crowd is around listening to him, right. but he's teaching about this group, you know, that specifically is rejecting that crowd. So he's, he's teaching both of them at the same time. So this group, knows they're lost. I mean, they're, they're coming right. to Jesus and they're like, hey, this is something I've never seen before. But the group right in front of them thinks they have salvation because they've worked for it. And, and what we brought up in the, in the sermon is what's, what, and this is the scariest, one of the scariest parts to me, is the group, the younger brother group, the crowd, they know they're lost, but the older brother group think that they're saved. Yeah. You know, and we can, we can even, you know, we, how many people identify as, you know, I'm a good Catholic, or I'm a good Orthodox, or yeah. I'm a good Baptist, yeah. or I'm a good yeah. Methodist, yeah. so therefore I'm saved, so therefore God owes me, so therefore I deserve, and, yeah. or therefore, you know, at the, and you have that scripture that says there's a lot of people that's going to be in front yeah. of the Father and, and say, listen, say, haven't yeah. I been on mission trips, haven't I done this, and the Father's going to say, listen, I, for me. I, I, never, I never knew you, right. and that's where we come into, you know, we say all the time, and it confuses some people. We say all the time, what the Lord wants is, is a personal relationship with you. And that, right. that might be triggering some people because you're like, that, that language is not in the scripture. I get that. But there is a, there's a very real 
uh, it describes something in Scripture, which is simply that the Lord wants to have a love relationship with you, like a father to a child. Right. Um, or or uh, Ephesians chapter 5, or a husband mm -hmm. to a wife. Like, mm -hmm. and, that's, that's, and if you don't have that, and you're just working for the father, he clearly is saying, you're, you're in danger. Yeah. Well, and, and, <clears throat> and you have to go back to not, not this past Sunday, but the, but the very first, and you said it again this Sunday, that look at who he's talking to. Right. Specifically to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Their uh, way of doing things, their, their pathway, their whatever, was about following rules, mm -hmm. And if you did not follow the rules, then, you know, this, this was the deal. Uh, and then Jesus came with this brand new, I was teaching a class and I was telling the guys, I said, can you imagine what it's like? And I'm not minimizing Christianity or minimizing when I no. say this, but here's a brand new philosophy, brand new way of thinking that says, wait a minute, hold on. I can relate to the creator on a relational level. Mm -hmm. Not only can, you know, the scribes and I mean, the Pharisees and the, uh, the teachers of the law, it was about the only way that I can relate to the creator is by being a good rule follower. And what the older brother was saying was, listen, I have followed the rules. I came on Easter and every Sunday after. Mm -hmm. I gave my 10% and gave sacrificially. Mm -hmm. I went on every mission trip, ones that I didn't want to go on and ones that I did want to go on. I served, now, I was frustrated about doing it, but I did it. And, you, and then you let this other dude, this, this your son, mm -hmm. so, so I mean, think about the attitude of that. He, wa he was around, but still lost. I mean, he was, he was there, but still off. That hit me. That hit me tough right there. I don't know. You're looking at me. I thought you were going to say No, no, I'm so. listening. Yeah, that's just... No, that's... I, I guess what I was thinking is uh, uh, I've had a bunch of conversations, and you were actually in the room with me in, in, in one of these here lately, is uh, when, you, when you talk to uh, church folks a lot of time, and I'm a church folk. Like, I'm a, you know, like I went to seminary. Like, I'm a definition yeah. of... So you, I'm, you're the I'm, definition of a right, church so, folk. So, <laughs> right, so, so I'm, not, I'm not separating me from you, so please right. don't hear that. Um, but a, a lot of times uh, when you have in a room and, and you're starting to get serious, the first thing the church folk wants to do is, what are you going to do with sinners? R what, yes. What, what are you... Where, and, and then you, they'll pick one. You, you were, you were, in, the, yeah, you were right. in the room with me. That's right. And it's that's like, right. it's like, it's like, hey, let's establish this. What are we going to do with the younger brother? Because, and usually what's behind is we can't just accept them, right? <laughs> we just can't let, let them come in here and run rampant, right. can we? You know? <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, and I, I, um, I actually thought about, I, I heard a, I heard a different, you've heard this take before, but I heard, I heard it differently yesterday and it really kind of stuck with me. Um, uh, a pastor that I know said that the uh, churches should be uh, much more like a waiting room in a doctor's office than a than a waiting room for a job interview. Yes, because if you're a waiting room in a doctor's office, you you assume everybody else in that room is sick. That's right, and they're waiting to be healed. Right. Whereas if you're in a waiting room for a job interview, you're you're everyone ever there is going to show their expertise. They're going to put their best face on. They're going right. to put their best, you know, and say, I deserve this. Yeah. And so as long as we think of the church as a waiting room in a doctor's office, yeah. we're all sick and we're all broken and yeah. we're all looking to see the doctor who can heal us. I think that that solves a lot of problems. Yeah, it does. And I think that we don't, we don't do that a lot. That's good. <clears throat> that whole thing is that this, now let me just, let me just say this back in, what was it? November? When did we go? When we laid out the yeah, series? Right. Josh was, oh, this is the best series ever. Da, da. And I'm thinking, really, dude? I'm just, I'm thinking in the back of right. my head, this better be good. Let me tell you something. Out of the series that this so far, so far, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think we got a series coming up that's going to be real good, too. Okay. But this so far right. is probably one of the best series that Grace United has done yeah. so far. Absolutely. I'm just saying, there's more to come. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> here's the last question, and then I have another question. Okay. Josh, you said there is a law of primo something. <laughs> Quote, law <laughs> of primo <laughs> something that is in the Bible, but isn't what the Bible teaches. What do you mean? Oh, okay. I know what that, yeah. I, I, yeah, right, that makes sense to me. So 
It's the law of primogenitor. It's it's talking about how. Um, Wait, say it slow. The law of primo primogenitor. Right. Yeah. So so if you think about first genetics, so there you go. Firstborn, firstborn son. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, what I mean by it's in the Bible, but it's not. I forget how they asked it, but it's yeah, they not. Said, it's, it's not what, what the Bible, the Bible teaches. teaches. Yeah. So there are things in the Bible that are, and this is the the best way that I know how to explain it. There are things in the Bible that are prescriptive and there are things in the Bible that are descriptive. descriptive. And so the difference between prescriptive and descriptive is simply this. Uh, prescriptive means it's something that the Bible is telling you to do. It's mm -hmm. prescribing something for you. So uh, 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 forgive your neighbor 70 times seven. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever the case may be, it, in, instructions, do this, don't do this. Is there prescriptive? God says do this. There are things that are descriptive that just says this is the way it was. Right. So if you think about a, a, a great example is the book of Judges. It says uh, in those days there was no king and, anybody, and everybody did whatever they want to. It's not, the book of Judges is not prescribing a way right. of government. <laughs> right. That's, That's not prescriptive. Right. It's yeah. not prescriptive. Yeah. You know, it's a, a you know, there's a story of David and Goliath, you know, and there, there was this man named Goliath and he did X, Y, and Z. It's not saying that you should be a Goliath. It's just saying historically <laughs> there was a Goliath. This is true. Right. right? And so uh, we can say, you know, Jesus went into a, a culture that was operating in its own way. Right. And he prescribed things, he, you know, he described, here's the situation, he prescribed, this is how you fix it. So it's, again, going back to the doctor illustration, you know, if you go into the doctor, the doctor will say, hey, Joshua, you have, you know, whatever it is, let's say I have a brain tumor. I hope that's not triggering, I'm just giving an yeah. example. He's just, he's not saying you should have a brain tumor. He's right. just saying you have a, you have a brain tumor right. and here's the prescription, here's what you should do about it. So the Bible talks about what, what is, descriptive and what should be prescriptive. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's just laying out the custom of the day. Right. Because the deal is, it would not really carry the weight that it would if we don't know the custom of right. the day. So for example, here's, here's a great example that people pick on all the time. Uh, they talk about, well, in the Old Testament, didn't they have multiple wives? And they yeah. have like, you know, I everyone mean, had yeah. five or six wives. And so, and so the Bible is pro-polygamy. No, 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 no. The Bible was describing. Right what was happening right if you if you look at if you look at marriage anywhere in the bible from genesis to revelation and everywhere in between god says marriage is between one man and one woman that's you right. get together and that shows the glory every time every time every time in scripture there is you know a polygamous marriage there's always destruction there's there's always destruction even with heroes in the bible oh absolutely <coughs> especially with especially with heroes in the Bible, because they want to show you that Abraham, David, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, men after God's own heart, and yet they destroyed their families, they abused women, you know, and so uh, there's a lot of descriptive things in the Bible and prescriptive. Uh, another one that I love, tattoos. We're going to get farther down the okay. thing. Okay. You know, Boy, you're going way down. I, I am. I am. You know, I'm a backup from that one because I'm going to have to explain a whole lot. But, yeah. But, but the whole idea of... of yeah, that's that's a bad. It, that's a bad example. It's a bad example. It, it's a good example of another biblical thing, but not of this one. Yeah, but yeah. There you go. So, so descriptive versus prescriptive. So here's a question that I have, <clears throat> as something went down my throat. I don't know what it, what it, what happened. It was just so heavy. All of this heavy stuff we're talking about, so deep in my throat. What have you left on the cutting room floor in this series <clears throat> so far? So far. Well, okay, no, let's just deal with Sunday. What was a part of the package? So let me kind of lay this out and let you explain it. I know we've okay. heard it before, but I think you need to explain it. <clears throat> when we come to sermons, we pray, we have all this stuff, and then we narrow it down, whittle right. it down. We, we curate for the time, for the time that we have, and Holy Spirit kind of whittles it down, curates it as well for the people that sure. are in the room. Right. What was there part of the big piece of the sermon right. that you can remember that you had to curate for what you gave us on Sunday? Sure. I, and that's an unfair question. No, it's but. not. It's not. <clears throat> um, so I would, I would say that there are two things that I, I touched on, but I just had to cut out all the meat of it. Uh, I'll do the secondary one and the, the primary one second. 
The secondary one was simply, I, we talked for briefly about what are the um, telltale signs that you're an elder brother, and so the yeah. elder brother was angry. Yeah. The elder brother felt like a slave internally. Yeah. The elder brother uh, was judgmental of everyone around them. You know, so you could spend, I could have spent, I, I felt like I wanted to spend way more time describing the internal workings of an elder brother because people could connect to it. Yeah. But it, um, that's the secondary. The primary thing I wish I spent more time on, uh, that I could spend more time on, is, um, is the idea, it goes back to the fact that we're an elder brother. So that, that's, okay. that's one of it. But okay. when we read a Bible story, by definition, and it's not, it's just a human being thing. Uh, when we read any story, we always put ourselves in the role of the hero. Oh yeah. Uh, and so when we read, when we read the the uh, the story of David and Goliath, you know, uh, you know, the we're, we're we're always the David and we're fighting the Goliath in right. our life. You there know, you when we are the, it, it it doesn't matter what story you're reading, you, you, <laughs> you always put. Um, but Jesus often uh, and God often tells a story, and we're meant to examine the fact that we're not the hero in the story. So in this story, uh, the father is the hero, mm -hmm. right? So that, mm -hmm. and that's what we'll talk about this coming week, yeah. Um, yeah. becoming like the father. Yeah. Um, I won't, but you know, cause I preached last week, but. Uh, <laughs> I, and, and then I'll try. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but you know, the, um, so in this story, even though I said to the audience, and I said, repeat after me, we are the older brother. We are the older brother. Yeah. Our very nature says, no, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the older brother. By our very nature, a, a pastor can get up and say, Jesus said this. You're the older brother. Let's examine how you're the older brother. What goes on in our hearts is I'm not the older brother, but you know who needs to listen to the sermon. That's the automatic go-to feeling in yeah. the human condition. Aunt, you're right. Auntie whatever, <laughs> or my son, yeah. or my cousin, <laughs> or right. that dude over there, you know. <laughs> right. And so and so we don't let, but you know, but you and I know, and they, and we all know really inherently is that um, two things will set you free because we all want freedom. And the elder brother was bound. He was a slave That's right. internally. That's right. So, 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 so what we're, what we're, what we're talking about doing is fighting against internal slavery. That's right. Right. That's right. And the way that you can, the way that you can solve your internal slavery, the way that we can solve our internal slavery, number one is letting God be the hero because he, yeah. he yeah. is the hero. Yeah. And when we release the reins of having to fight our own battles, yeah. when we release the reins of having to produce our own goodness to where we earn and deserve the Father's love, when we can just lay down and, and let him love us, sacrifice for us, and win our battles for us is a much more freeing, stress-free, anxiety-free <clears throat> life. But, but it is. Let me say it, let me say this this yeah, way. You say it the way you it, need to say it. It eventually gets there. Because if you are so used to driving, uh, regardless of how many wrecks you've had, how much you've torn up your life, mm -hmm. torn up relationships, whatever, and you begin that process, it is initially uncomfortable. Well, it goes back to your sermon two weeks ago. Well, yeah. Well, well, that's true. Because that's true. Ta be, right, <laughs> that's true. right. Well, because because how because what the younger son did, what you preached on, and what the older son didn't do, the younger son repented. That's right. Turned That's around, right. the older son did not. But, and then repentance is uncomfortable. D that, repentance well, it is. is hard because it, it begins is. with saying, I'm broken, I don't have the solution, how do I get yes. there? Yes. It's the older son that refused to repent because he didn't see that he needed to repent of anything because he thought, I'm good enough, I don't have to repent in front of a holy, omnipotent, omnipresent, yeah. all, you know, God, and uh, that's a scary place to be in. It, it, it is. And, and, the, and the thing that we still have to keep in context is this, is that that is a parable. Jesus is still, that's still a parable. I mean, we can, <clears throat> we can dissect. I, and, and I remember when I was doing some, uh, it was a Bible study class, I, I guess. You can sway all the way on the end of, hey, it's just a parable, and we just can skim across the top or we could come all the way to the other end and say, those are real people and we got to do, there is, a, there is a natural happy medium, if you will, sure. that yes, it's a parable, but it is, it is, it is communicating a legitimate theological truth. Mm -hmm. 
that even when I first heard the prodigal son, I mean, you know, it, think about it. Every Bible that I see, it is labeled the prodigal, yeah. the prodigal son. And you immediately go to the pig pen, give me my stuff, I'm way out. And I've even heard sermons preached that people talk about, but he stayed at home and he did. Yeah, but look at him, he stayed at home, but <clears throat> no, he's not in the strip club. He's in a Sunday school class, but he's gonna bust hell wide open because <laughs> he's still not with the father. Uh, back in the day when I was younger, people used to say, just cause you coming doesn't necessarily mean you're going. That's, and that, I, I, that, I mean, and it's, and it's not just what's parable, you know, so, so if, if internally you find yourself fighting against what we're talking about in this parable, then I encourage you to pick a gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, and, yeah. and just read it. And, and it, it, it's, 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 I hate to do just black and white categories, but pick out, pick out the good guys. Yeah and pick out the bad guys. And what, what you will find if you just read one of the parables is, is the bad guys are generally the very religious. That's right. Older brother is uh, uh, rule, rule following. following. Right. I mean, they're so good they make up their own rules on top of rules so they can stay within the rules of the rules of the rules. And Jesus is like, you're gonna take those rules and go to hell. <laughs> That's right. You're gonna have a book of rules on fire. Right, but it's, right. but it's, it's so, so it is a very scary thing. And that's, but see, this is what Jesus does. Jesus comes in and he turns everything upside down. Yeah. This is just simply what he does. And so he comes in and he says, listen, religious folks, you can be and generally are more blind to your brokenness yeah. than those that are just obviously broken. And that's, it's going back to the head tumor thing. You know, if I know I have a head tumor, I can do something about it. Yeah. If I don't know I have a head tumor and I just let that joker roll, it's going to kill me. If I don't out. know that I'm separated from the Father because I'm doing all of this work, then you're going to die spiritually yeah. and you're going to die apart from the Father and you will, uh, there are eternal consequences to allowing yourself to stay in our blindness. That's right. That's good. Man, this series is good. Listen. Uh, Josh, this is good stuff, man. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. He's he's doing this because it's, hot. <clears throat> it's nah, hot. I'm actually cold. I'm like warming, yeah. well, warming up my <laughs> fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't get cold, which is rare. That's yeah. I don't get it. my fingers and my toes get cold. Do they? Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I got you. That's yeah, cool. There we go. I'm gonna have to. So so hopefully here in a couple of weeks you'll see me with a hoodie like that because I want that hoodie. There you I'm go. gonna get one. That's Good. what I'm gonna get. Hey, thanks for joining us on this episode of Grace Unfiltered. Listen, this Sunday, not two services, one service. Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Ten a.m. Uh, go ahead and set your clock. Go ahead and call your friends. I know you lay out what you're gonna wear. You can wear whatever. I love the fact that this is a casual environment. I love it, that you don't have to impress, that you don't have to do anything. I love the fact that it's a family environment. We can yep. hang out, we got stuff for your kids. Listen, if you have children, we've got a place for toddlers all the way up to, um, man, uh, fifth and sixth grade. Our students are meeting, but they meet on Wednesday. Will they meet tonight on Wednesday? Tomorrow, yes, tonight, yes. Yeah, <clears throat> they will meet, cool. Yeah. Spring back, just go ahead and bring them. That's it, 12, nine, I don't, what happened? It's just, 12 900 Cancer <laughs> Road, 10 o'clock. Bye, Cynthia. Bye, Cynthia. <laughs> yeah, hey, we, even though your daddy's not here, or she says, Daddy. 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 D E D D Y, we still say bye, Cynthia. Bye, Cynthia.